Today on the show, we have Nyla Rose, also known as Debbie Kong from the Tofu Pro Wrestling Series. We talk about her graduating from wrestling school, her being part of an improv variety theater show, her skills in capoeira, and just general talk about wrestling and nerd stuff. Let's get this show going. Hello. Hello. Hey. Uh, sorry. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, taking this call. Yeah. Yeah. No. Thank you for for having me. So so nice to meet you. Is it okay if I call you Nyla or you? <laughs> yeah. You want me to refer to you as? <laughs> no, Nyla's fine. Okay. Gr- uh, great. So um, yeah, I just have a bunch of questions. Uh, I guess the most obvious one is like, uh, how did you get into wrestling and? How did you get into this? Uh, because it's a pretty inter- uh, different profession. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I grew up as a fan. Um, I used to watch it with my grandmother. She she grew up on it as well. So it definitely is, is kind of like a family heirloom in that, right? Right. Um, but yeah, I grew up watching it with my grandmother and just was always a fan. In high school, it kind of kind of skyrocketed because that's like right around the time wrestling was like really getting popular mainstream and a bunch of my classmates watched it so we would all get together and you know when you have common interest with somebody it just kind of like really fuels it right 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 so you're talking about this is like the monday night wars kind of era yeah yeah definitely cool cool so you grew up around that time do you have any like do you have any influences maybe people you really like to follow at the time um, at the time, um, like the one thing that like really sticks out or stuck out for me, like, I mean, I, I watched it before that during, during the golden era, yeah. so, you know, all, all, all of those, uh, uh, stars at the time, but then, you know, as it happens, they all cycle out, um, from the Monday Night Wars era, the thing that really sticks out to me was, was definitely the, uh, the rock stone cold like feud over the intercontinental title oh okay so early so early on when he was still this was when he was N- nation of domination is that when, when it was? yeah 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 for sure yeah like i i don't know like that just stands out so hardcore for me <laughs> just because like i don't know maybe maybe just because it was the intercontinental title and i at the time and even kind of now felt what they were doing like outshine the world title Right, right, right. Because you could tell they were both going to be pretty big. You could just see oh, the tra- yeah. you could see the trajectory. That's funny you said Intercontinental because I, I, they, they were having this uh, WrestleMania uh, sale on the on the WWE shop, and I was actually looking through for, through the uh, replica Intercontinental titles because <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to buy one for the longest time, but they're like four hundred dollars. <laughs> And like they had it on sale, and I and I I was thinking about man, should I spend this three hundred dollars and get it? And it, I I specically was looking at the Intercontinental titles because <laughs> I always liked how those look, especially the white the a one great with the, design. Yeah, That's especially with the one with the white band. Oh man! Yes. So that that was those were all my always my favorite. I always liked the Intercontinental, but I I feel like just now there's way too many titles. It's it's hard for me to keep up with. I would agree with that. Um, and I got to be honest, like, I don't really care for the simplistic uh, uh, nature of it. Like, I've seen some fan created or fan renditions uh-huh. where they've melded, like, the old winged eagle with the new design. And uh-huh. it looks so good. I'd like to see those. I Yeah, I was looking through them. You're talking about the winged eagles, like the world world championship ones, right? Yeah, like, I, like they just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm no good with Photoshop, but like, they they superimpose it on the back, and uh-huh. then they have the you know the giant WWE logo in the front ground, uh-huh. and like I don't know, like I'm a fan of like a full plated belt, like I, I don't it just I don't know it's something about it to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, the, the the new ones, it just looks too much for me. It looks too much like a ring, like it's just something you would put on your finger. It's just this yeah. big old like yeah, world a, championship. It's a little too simple. It's a little too simple for my taste. Did, did you did you have any uh, opinion? There's a there was a divas belt right with like a kind of like a butterfly logo yeah i i don't know like, i didn't like on one hand i didn't mind it because it was you know the unique design it was kind of like it was like oh, it was okay kind of cool but like on the other hand it was like 
this looks like something you would give an eight year old. Yeah, for like a princess kid. party. Or yeah. Something. Okay. So you you kind of I don't wanna, I don't know if the offensive is the right word, but it just seems not very like world championship. Yeah, like it wasn't like it wasn't offensive to me. It was just kind of like oh. Okay, that's what you're gonna give us. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like you begrudgingly take it, I guess. I yeah. Know. It was funny because yeah, because I was listening to an interview with Bailey recently where she was talking about how like her mom or her grandmother had bought her a belt and here had bought her like the Divas belt and she was like, oh well, I kind of would have rather had the World Championship belt. Yeah. But, <laughs> but okay, I guess you know. So yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, like that's. That's cool, I guess. <laughs> so like, you kind of have the same. You're kind of having the same reaction a little bit. That's funny. yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. It's cool. It's just not my first choice. <laughs> right. So, uh, so I'm sorry. Uh, I just recently started following your career. Uh, how how long have you been wrestling now? Um. So I've been in ring talent for. Oh God, are you making me think? Oh, like five <laughs> or six years now. Okay, so um, five or six years. I, it's pretty. That's pretty. Uh, it's relatively new in as far as careers, right? Yeah, like in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty new. I've been in the business. I've been around everything, doing every job under the sun for about 11 years. Oh, really? Yeah. So w- when you say un- jobs under the sun, you mean like <laughs> ring setting up or? Yeah, like so including including training and then like I, um, I so photography is a hobby of mine and like I do more like uh, nature, just kind of like whatever catches my eye. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I did a little bit of ringside photography for the promotion that I trained at Kaido Pro. Um, so I did that, and then I ring announced for a little bit. Um, oh, really? Then, then I managed. So like literally everything you could do. <laughs> so so when you say ring managed, was this kind of like a build up to eventually you getting into the ring, or this was like kind of training, or is it just that's something you felt found interest in? Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that was um, during my training. Um, I guess I, you know, demonstrated a level of trust and, or, or, you know, I was able to be trusted with a certain amount of, uh, I don't even know what you would say. Like responsibility. Um, yeah, yeah. And then given my martial arts background, um, wrestling kind of came second nature to me. So I kind of, I, I don't want to say like I flew through it or it was a breeze because wrestling by no, no means is a breeze for anyone. And hell, I'm still learning new stuff every day. Um, but, but it did kind of click a little bit, you know, it just, it just kind of like registered with me. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's for some people it comes a little bit more naturally than others. Yeah. Some people may be more co- coordinated and pick up stuff a little bit quicker. Yeah. So I was, I was able to like kind of, kind of get in there and, and, you know, have a spot here and there and do this or that. Cool. So this was, how early did you start having like, you're talking about in ring spots? Um, pretty early. I would say maybe like, maybe like a year into actually being involved in the business oh wow so so that's yeah i mean that's pretty and this is within your you're saying 11 years so this is within your first first year like, you're saying. yeah like literally my first year like still a trainee like haven't graduated yet but like a year in and uh-huh. it's like okay yeah nyla can handle this like you know we'll bump her around for a little bit and, and give her some stuff now, okay so that's cool you said two things from there it's uh one i guess do you were you remember what you were asked to do, like initially? Um, set up the ring. <laughs> um, that was probably like my like very initial uh, sweep the floor, set up the chairs, set up the ring, make sure the camera had tape in it, stuff like that. So, uh, so, so set up the ring is. I mean, how long of a process is that? Oh God, um, if you have if you have enough hands on deck, it's not that long. I would say maybe maybe like fifteen to twenty minutes. Give oh really? Take. Yeah, like give or take. Oh, cool. So, so that's really, really quick then. Yeah, like like I said, if you have enough hands on deck, it can go pretty quick if you guys aren't, you know, goofing off and anything. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, getting it up is uh, is relatively quick process. Then you might want to add maybe another five to ten minutes in there for like adjusting the ring, make sure the ropes are right, the canvas is on right, the apron is on right, um, and then from there, every like the rest of the setup because. You know, you can't just throw a ring up like you have to have the whole arena looking good. So, right. you know, that's a whole other process. You know, you, you factor in everything. You're looking at a couple of hours. So, I mean, that, that's pretty cool. It seems like that's part of like the the right way to do the culture a little bit because everybody kind of hands on. You le- you're 
Because, I mean, I imagine if you came in and you didn't ever have to deal with the ring at all, you wouldn't have kind of, like, the respect for, like, the appreciation for, like, how the business works. I, you know, and I don't know if it's if it's because that's how I was trained, but I absolutely agree with that. You know, and there are places, you know, I'm not going to call anybody out by name because, quite frankly, I don't know. But I do know there are places that don't really focus on these these values. And it, it's a real bummer. Like, you know, I, I've been, been around people and they're like, well, how do you do this? Like, are you kidding me? How do you not know how to do this? Yeah, it just it just seems like a very basic, like, you should have, an, if you're in there, in the ring or around the ring, you should have a, at least like some sort of a basic understanding of how the ring is, like, put together or works or, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, even if even if you never do it, you never pick up another a board or a piece of iron again, you know, you, you still need to show respect to the people who are doing that so that you can go out there and do what you do. It's, a, you know, it's only right, in my opinion. This seems more of like an old school mentality versus like some of the, I, I feel like uh, kids these days or young youths these days are less like interested in those kind of things. Yeah, I, I would, kind I of would I'll co-sign it. that. <laughs> So um, you said you, you, you graduate. You mentioned graduating. Um, so you, it was like a wrestling school, I'm assuming. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's 100% legit wrestling school. Uh, the same one, actually, that Mickey James and uh, Joey Mercury went to. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, cool. And uh, so uh, as far as that process, you know, how's the, that experience? Uh, I mean, it's for how, how long are you there for? Oh, my gosh. Uh I, I should have taken notes on myself before doing this. I I <laughs> don't know. It, it, it was it was quite a while because you know you, you kind of develop a sense of family with these people, um, uh-huh. you know. And then after after your training is complete, you know you you kind of go on and you're on the main roster of the show. Uh-huh. If you're if you're lucky, you know you get graduated to the main roster of the show and um, you're performing. You know, not just with this with these people, but you know, you want to stay close to home for a while, you know, so you get your right. footing and, and kind of understand what's going on. Um, yeah, that's... And, and like I said, Kaido really was, they really operated like a family. We we would talk shit about each other constantly and, <laughs> and just like really go hard on each other. But it was also like to kind of push each other to be our best selves, you know? Right. And then from there, uh, Jimmy Z and, and John Kerman and, and uh, um, everybody would just kind of like uh, Joe Brooks, uh, uh Chuck you in they all helped us get to other places you know so they mm-hmm. didn't just throw you to the wolves like okay you're a wrestler now good luck they actually yeah they actually tried like help us get bookings and like really push us and uh not just as far as training but you know push us and get our name out there they really helped with that so uh you say is that a pretty difficult part of the business like uh you know promoting yourself getting around do you do this a lot yourself or you have an agent or no no it, it's tricky because um a lot of places don't really focus on the entirety of professional wrestling they don't focus on the professional aspect of it um, uh-huh. you're you, when you when you become a wrestler you're in the entertainment business you become an entertainer when you're an entertainer you yourself are your product so you have to wear many hats behind the scenes. You have to know how to sell yourself. You know how right. you, know, you have to know how to carry yourself. So right, in a right, sense, right. you you have to be your own agent. You have to be a salesman. You have to do marketing. You have to do management and promotion. You, know, you have to do all these things by yeah. yourself, especially yeah. on the independent level. Um, uh-huh. Kind of having a background in in acting and in theater. I kind of had a little bit of that insight and knowledge. So I'd like to think, and I don't mean this to sound cocky, but like, I kind of like to think <laughs> I had a leg up on some people with like knowing how the process works. Not saying I knew what I was doing because I abso- absolutely did not, but I knew the process. Right. I mean, that helps a lot. Yeah. Um, like my parents ran restaurants. And so like when I got into the restaurant business, there were just some things that came kind of like a little bit more naturally, even yeah. though I was... Still very unaware of many things. Some of the yeah. stuff is just kind of, kind of common sense. You you mentioned theater. Um, I was looking through your twi- uh, Twitter <laughs> f- account, and there was uh, like a lingerie kind of. You said you should come watch me in the theater, and I was trying to figure out what exactly that meant. Um, that was my costume for uh, last weekend. I did a production. Uh, it's called the Tarot Reading. And it's not it's not as occult as it sounds. It's <laughs> it's kind of hard to describe, to be honest with you. But it is an interactive theatrical experience, um, uh-huh. more in the vein of like a variety show, if you will. 
Oh, cool. Um, oh, this is in New York. In in Washington D.C. D.C. Okay. For now, hopefully we can get this thing on the road. But um, yeah, if you're in the D.C. area, the D.M.V. as we call it, uh, come on out for an iteration because it's it's truly unique. Like every night is a little bit different because it's interactive. So uh-huh. even I don't know what the show is going to become because I don't know who from the audience is going to be participating alongside me. Uh, so it's kind of almost like an improv kind of thing. Yeah, it's like half scripted, half improv. Uh, w- w- sorry, what is this called again? Can I the tarot the reading? Oh, tarot reading. Uh, there's a there's a if you maybe you give me the links and stuff and I'll cl- absolutely. Include them in the I, I will definitely give those to you. Reading. So, uh, and I also see you tweet a lot about uh, like what is it the FC uh... the lingerie. MMA thing? Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> interesting. Do I tweet pretty... a lot about that? I feel like that's kind of new. <laughs> well, well, maybe that maybe in the last couple of weeks because I feel like I've seen it a lot the last couple of weeks. Maybe. Yeah they they had a um I guess they had like a uh, uh I don't know uh, fan fiction choose your own destiny I don't know but somebody somebody from there said hey you know um we got your name would you be interested in doing this and I'm hey what the hell why not so. I signed up for it, and we'll see what happens. Oh, really? Oh, really? I, I didn't win, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, why not, right? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. There's plenty of reasons not to do something, and I've always been the type to try to... Okay, well, let's come up with a reason. Let's just do it. You know, exactly. Why not? That's kind of my motto. Live for the story. <laughs> it's good, because, you'll have, yeah, you have lot, lots more stories to tell. Um... You said you had a martial arts background. That's correct. Uh, what wh- what in exactly? Um, mostly trained in Taekwondo, uh, but I did uh-huh. I did study judo for a little bit and a little little bit of capoeira, like just enough. Oh, really? Just enough to pretend I know what I'm doing. <laughs> but that's a, that's great then. You, you can uh, <laughs> pull off some Eddie Gordo moves or something. And... Yeah, <laughs> I definitely look like when you mash all the buttons. <laughs> uh, that's that's cool. I, because um yeah in 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 watching some of these YouTube clips there's a clip I think it's your your actual YouTube channel where you you like you, you w- wasted a GTA like, uh, uh, yeah. the, oh yeah, my yeah, gosh the back. <laughs> that was a real kick right that was yeah that was that was a little stiff <laughs> but yeah but it it's oh man I, I feel bad because she she went out of the ring and everything tension <laughs> running high that night it's it's a dangerous profession it really is yeah. um. You've, have you had any like moments where you like really were scared or like oh man this is my career like what am I gonna do like ironically um nothing in the ring like all of my worst injuries from wrestling involving wrestling had to do with not being anywhere near a ring well that's not true really? like one of them I would say probably two of them I was in the ring but it was nothing ever major like my first black eye ever not even in martial arts the first black eye I got from pro wrestling um uh-huh. somebody had butted me in the eye socket oh yeah that was not fun <laughs> and um I actually uh uh I like twisted my ankle walking to the ring <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah <laughs> it's, it's 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 funny how stuff works like that sometimes you just the easiest stuff sometimes ends up being... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it all, like, everybody, my family, like, everybody makes fun of me. They're like, how can you do all this stuff, jump off the top rope, do all this, like, fancy stuff in the ring, but you can't even walk upstairs? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But So, you're, yeah, you're pretty high risk, clumsy? right? I see yes, you... I'm very clumsy. No, pretty oh, high risk. Cl- <laughs> Um, I do. I do like to uh, do some flashy, high risk stuff every once in a while. You know, switch it yeah. up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, j- yeah, it's it's great. It's just uh, just take care of yourself. I hope you're. <laughs> Can I ask you about the uh, on your Twitter? It says, uh, "Am I pronouncing this right?" O- Oneida. Oneida. Oneida, and that's uh, a certain Native American. Yeah, that's so. Uh, that's my tribe. Um, I'm Oneida, mm-hmm. uh, part of the Iroquois Confederacy, known as the uh-huh. Six Nations, upstate New York and, and that whole era area. Um, and that's that's my heritage, it's my lineage. Um, I'm not full blooded. I you know, I never claim to be. Um, I am mixed, biracial, whatever how you want to say that. But that that is uh, very much a part of my bloodline. And that's that's why uh, your your website is the native beast. Yeah. Um the native beast that nickname was kind of given to me by the fans uh Uh i was it was during a show and it was like really early in my career i want to say like the first couple of months 
and somebody was like, oh, she's a beast of a woman. And I kind of liked that because, you uh-huh. know, you don't really hear that being used to describe very many people or women. Uh-huh. So I, I don't know. I just kind of ran with it. Yeah, I, I think it's very f- fitting of you. So so that makes me ask you then, uh, do you feel it's easier to, like, play the bad guy character? Or is do you prefer playing, like, the good guy? Or um, It's definitely easier to be the bad guy character because you can... <laughs> It's 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 kind of easy to get under people's skin, you know, like, uh-huh. especially if you know how to read people, you can kind of just keep pushing that button. Um, it's a little trickier to get people to like you. Really? And you're you're saying in general, just in in general or wrestling in general? No, no, or... in general, in everyday life. So I feel and I may be wrong, but I feel it's it's a little harder to get complete strangers to like you. You know, you always hear the term, oh, win them over. You got to win this person over. Um, yeah. People tend to put up a wall when they meet new people, even yep. if they go in, you know, pleasantly, there's still a bit of a wall up. And right. The hesitation kind of. Exactly. Exactly. And it, even if they don't mean it in the back of their minds, a lot of people are like, why should I like you? You know, entertain me, make me enjoy you. So if you're the bad guy, you can kind of come out and just be a douchebag right off the break. And people, just <laughs> and people immediately you. just react to that. Yeah. Like they, they, <laughs> they already kind of don't like you. So if you come out and you're in their face and just doing stuff, they're like, yeah, I definitely don't like this person. <laughs> How about like, uh, as far as costumes, have you always gone with the same costumes or have you um, g- gone through a different I, couple iterations? I've tweaked it a little bit. And actually I'm, I'm kind of in the, uh, weird transitional period i'm trying to figure out where my character is going um it's definitely important to constantly evolve and and fluctuate i think that's very Mm -hmm. important you want to stay fresh you know you want to stay fresh you want to stay relevant um but i also don't want it to be like me being a character so to speak i want it to just be natural and very organic so i'm just kind of trying to meld a few ideas and just see what kind of happens naturally and you you do all the costume work yourself um for the most part yeah uh, you know i might buy a, a base singlet from like a dance company or, or wherever but so far what i'm wearing now yeah it's, it's all pretty much been myself um my wife has helped me a little bit with some of the uh, production on some things but usually my idea but we have some things in store for you guys coming up here in the next year, we're working on some stuff. I don't want to give too much away, but I think you're gonna like where we're going. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So, what's a like? What's a typical schedule for you? You're you're on the road, or you're performing pretty much. I, I you know, I wish I could say I was on the road uh, uh, every day of the week. I honestly wish I could say that. I don't think my family wishes that I could say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but yeah. So I, I do I do have a uh, uh, you know a side gig throughout the week just to make a little bit of extra coin um Great. but as far as wrestling i i definitely um travel as much as i possibly can there's not much where i live so i do have to travel for that usually uh-huh. up and down the east coast but occasionally i make it out west a little bit i have yet to get as far west as i would like i would love 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 to get out to like texas and california and and the like but nothing yet so that's just as far as uh like request as like fan requests helps that or is there anything fan people requests can do? definitely helps you know you definitely want to let your your local promotion know who you want to see I, I get a lot of requests from people in my inbox hey nyla would you ever come wrestle here would you can you come wrestle here i i've said it time and time again i will wrestle anyone anytime anywhere <laughs> like I will wrestle on the moon. I will wrestle on a spaceship, whatever. I don't care. I just love to entertain. I want to wrestle. So don't tell me, you know, like I definitely want to come. I want to come see you as much as you want to see me. Tell your promoters, tell them that you want to see me. Put that bug in their ear. Just keep bugging them. They're like, you know what? The fans want to see this person. There might be something to them. Let me check them out. Let me take a gamble on this person. So I'm not really familiar with the local, like Houston and Texas scene. But is there a? Do you? Would you by any chance know the who I should talk to in Houston? I'm not gonna lie. I do not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do not know. Uh, there are some huge promotions out there. I do know that Sabotage uh, Wrestling. I think they might be based out of Texas or somewhere nearby. They're definitely ones to watch. And if they're listening, definitely people I'm interested in working with, wink, wink, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. 
Um, but yeah, uh, uh, Texas, I'm not that familiar. But anytime somebody tells me, hey, talk to so-and-so, I'm definitely in that person's inbox pestering them to hire me. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, I'll see if I can look around here then. Is it okay if we talk about your involvement with the uh, with Tofu Pro Wrestling, the Japanese? Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Show. So, uh, yeah. So that's how I was introduced to you. Is I have a friend. Uh, he, I, I see him tweet you all the time. Uh, Baba Nanat. Um, okay. Yeah. He, yeah. That name rings a bell. <laughs> uh, I had followed the Idol group for a while, and uh, you know, I was always a wrestling fan when I was young, but just kind of grew out of it after I went to college, and then uh, been an Idol fan since. And he was telling me like oh you should watch the show and even more cool it's they do this they did this live event once and they had these uh and we we got he was on the show we were talking about like you know safety for the for the girls because right. they're not actually like athletes and stuff like that and uh we we ended up talking about uh y'all's match the the tag team you had with uh jordan yeah against uh the the two other girls and when i saw it it was great because i didn't feel any safety concerns at all because <laughs> because that's the thing. A lot of idol fans were like, "Oh gosh, these these wrestling and they're gonna hurt themselves." But like, when you're in there with like like trained professionals who know what they're doing, first of all, they they know what they're doing and they're not, you know, they can like. Yeah, there's one point where one of the girls jump off from the outside and you can't. Yeah, you I remember that. <laughs> yes, she you literally like, she jumps into your arms and you know it's a great moment in the, in that in that match. But like that's completely not possible if it's just <laughs> yeah. I the the girls him. doing yeah. it, and then uh, like some of the stuff, uh, some of the bumps y'all take, or you know, and you guys, I really loved it because there's there's this one part, and I uh, it's just my my favorite part where you're on the outside and you run up and you slide up on the the ring and like uh, <laughs> she's like choking, uh, yeah, Jordan's yeah, yeah, choking yeah. the girl, and you have your boot and you just give them like the rock sign and just stick your tongue out, like that's why I asked you if you were like naturally just better at playing like you know the bad guy because it just seems so like. <laughs> Such a naturally fun moment, you know. I I think I think I may be a little too good at being bad, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, no, it 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 was the whole experience was incredible. It truly was a blessing. Um, it kind of started, I, and I don't know if you if you uh, heard, caught wind, or saw, but uh, previously I was actually on the television show with uh, Hollywood Jorina. And um, we we had a a segment on the on the actual television show, right? And, the drama, right? Where you guys had the one on one match. Yeah, yeah. The, where you were the from the this other match in like three hours or something crazy like that. Uh huh. Um, it, that was a huge blast. Like working on. So this was actually on like a TV like set and everything. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because like my Twitter blew up. Like I thought for sure I was gonna get that blue check mark that night. I did not. I, I'm still not that popular, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like, I guess people didn't realize I was a real professional wrestler and, and it was pretty, it was pretty humbling and all sorts of amazing to watch people just kind of like blow up my Twitter with, with like, Oh my God. And like, I can't believe it. And you're actually a wrestler and just all the like praise and love and, and just telling me how much they enjoyed the show. Um, that felt really good because I was nervous as hell <laughs> being on a Japanese television show, you know? Right, um, right, right. Yeah, but 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 apparently I did a good job and, and the fans loved it. And that's what it's all about, really. But uh, like you said, we did the live version and I guess my character was popular enough. And I, I was just blessed that they asked me to come back. And, and the rest, I guess, is history. Hopefully it's not the last we see of Debbie Kong. <laughs> Well, well, first of all, like, how did you get involved? Like, they just looked you up or you had known somebody who knew somebody or? You know, I honestly have no idea. I I don't know if I I wish I could say, you know, I'm such a great wrestler that they loved everything I did. But I really don't know. My my company, Marvelous, my my office approached me and, and said, hey, you know, there's a show, Tofu Pro Wrestling. They're interested in having you on. Is that something you want to do? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Absolutely. <laughs> like, just say yes and then explain to me what it is. Like, I'm agree to it first and then tell me what I'm doing. But yeah, like, I, I kind of jumped into it without even knowing fully what it was. And so you, this was, you had to go to Japan to shoot all this, correct? Well, actually, uh, so when we, when we shot the television show was on my second, yeah, it was on my second tour of Japan. Like I said, I'm signed with uh, Nagayo Chigusa's company, Marvelous. 
in Japan. So I'm with her and uh, Marvelous. We tour around. And during my second tour over there, uh, Tofu approached them and asked, could they borrow me for a few hours to shoot this television show? And then I think we made some magic. Uh, so it was only like two, a couple hours in the f- filming. Yeah, you say that, but until you're on a film set, a couple of hours is a couple <laughs> of hours. So it's just a lot of like retakes and yeah, uh... yeah, like it's it's a lot. You know, it's it's uh in the film industry, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. So you know, there's setting yeah. shots and there's a you know, it's really highly technical. So you're you're like, what is taking so long? Point the camera, let's do this. But no, they <laughs> they have to like do measurements and make really? sure you know make sure the lens that they're using fits the frame and all this other stuff. Oh, and wow. Not to mention the show we're doing is like highly stunt involved. So we have to make sure the stunts are safe and everything for all the talent involved. So so they're pretty safe with the talent then, right? Oh, they're absolutely they're... safe. Like overly okay. safe. <laughs> I see, I see. So yeah, so it's completely, it's a completely different like doing than doing like a live wrestling show, right? Because in in the live stuff, you have no chance to redo or set up shots or anything like that. It's everything's go 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 and improv, improv. Yeah, exactly, exactly. With you know, and with this, it was like everything was kind of pre planned out. Um, again, it's a television show, uh, so everything was pre planned out. We had safety mats, which I was definitely not used to using. <laughs> So it was it was a much much welcomed change of pace on my behalf to get to land on such a soft <laughs> soft oh. canvas. Yeah, so the normal canvas is pretty soft then, right? When you did it for the live shows. Yeah, the so for tofu it was a little softer than normal because they got to take care of the girls, they got to take care of the idol. Um, right. But it, it was I I felt like I was at a day spa. It was definitely the most pampered. <laughs> It was the most pampered I had been. It was it was kind of nice. <laughs> but and so, so also there was uh, I'm assuming there was a live like there was a crowd there. Oh my god, like, yeah. Um, we were at and I never pronounce this right. So everyone listening, please forgive me and my tongue. Karakuen Hall. Oh yeah, that's right, Karakuen. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we were, and it was like packed to the gills. Like there were people everywhere this is for the live event or this for, the is for the live taping? event yeah i couldn't even you... begin to guess how many people there were like thousands but but for as far as the taping there was a live yeah yeah audience. so for the taping um I'm, I'm sure they were extras or maybe they were right. just like hey we're gonna do some wrestling you guys want to come watch it today um right and, that's and usually, reacting yeah that's usually what they do with like a cattle call or something but there, there were a few people a live people in the audience well i mean do you ever get like weirded out like having to you know like wait I, I imagine when it's a live thing you're just in character you go out there you do your thing and then like you know just kind of react to the crowd but like for a tv show like personally i know that i would get really weird like you know doing the thing and then like cut and then you stop and everybody's like they're just everybody's kind of just watching you right you're on... yeah actually a little bit what? um no i i don't know blame the theater background or whatever but god i'm gonna sound so cocky it was like i'm kind of used <laughs> to having like all eyes on me so it's kind of like whatever um and then just me yeah. my natural goofy self i just started joking around with the uh, extras and everybody else and like oh cool like all the extras they were like super chill like nobody nobody was complaining or anything a lot of times you find people who are like this is taking forever or like, you know, I didn't know what to expect, but everybody, Oh yeah, like yeah. Everybody there was just having a good time and, and we were cracking jokes and just, we were just having a ball. It was, it was, uh, it was like a party. That's, uh, that's great. <laughs> um, but you worked with, uh, for the live show, you worked with Jordan. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. and you guys have worked together before in the past. Yeah, like, not as a tag a f- team though. We've we've had uh we've had a few encounters, a few matches here and there. Um, but this was the first time we worked together as a tag team, and I don't know. Dare I say I thought we worked pretty well together. It's it's great because uh yeah, it's it's great because so there are some moments uh during that tag match where where I was like, it's only possible because of who <laughs> they're working with. They're, like I th- the finish specifically. Yeah. I mean, Jordan takes the the, the her finisher move, the the driver move. No, Jor- uh, Jordan is a total sweetheart. She's probably gonna kill me for saying this, but she's a total sweetheart. Um, she she's she's got a great mind for the business, as you know. That's kind of a cliche saying, but she really does. Um, and she's and she's an absolute joy outside of the ring. I I really enjoy her company. 
Um, so she was a lot of fun to have along on this trip to Japan. Um, I got, I, I actually, uh, had, a, a, a we had, we had a little bit of downtime and I had the pleasure of showing her around a little bit and, you know, she seemed like she had a blast. So, so you, um, the, you, you mentioned that was your second tour. Well, when they called you for tofu, tofu, that was your second tour in J- Japan. So you had toured Japan before. Yeah. Yeah. Wrestling. So I, I, I was there maybe the year before, um, just, uh, just strictly wrestling with Marvelous. Uh, it was my first time. So nobody really knew me. Um, uh-huh. But, but you, you had never been to Japan before. No, no, I had never been to Japan before. Um, I'd like to think that I made a bit of a name for myself. Uh, you know, I met some really amazing fans, met some really amazing people. And when I left, you know, I had worked for a couple of different companies, uh, Sendai Girls, uh, Zero One, uh, Wave. It And it was, you know, I made, I made, I made, a, I, mean, I guess I made some friends, made some new contacts and everything. And then when I came back, um, I definitely could feel the love that that was there, you know, like everybody seemed like they were really happy to see me. And I felt welcome, like not like not that I didn't before. But, you know, it's like when you return to a place and everybody's like mm-hmm, really mm-hmm. happy to see you. Right. Yeah. Like it was just kind of like, ah, this is home. Like, ah, I did do something. Uh, so how how long were you in Japan for the couple of times? Uh, the first time I was there for four months. The second time oh. was like five and a half. Pretty good length, huh? And this, this yeah, was just around yeah. the Tokyo area, or no, no. When I say tour, we were all over the place. Uh, goodness, I couldn't even tell you everywhere. We were in uh, Hokkaido, Fukuoka, awesome uh, Miyagi, ooh, just <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> That's great. So you really got like a feel for the like country, like yeah, being yeah. able to travel travel around. The, a, any particular favorite uh, spots for you? Like you really enjoyed like certain places or certain food um, or something? Yeah, uh, Miyagi is really cool. I really like it up that way. Where we stayed in the uh, Chiba Prefecture, I love it. It's it's a little bit country, but also a little bit city, and uh-huh. it, it just kind of reminds me of like where I live here, where. You know, two hours in any direction. You could be in the mountains. You could be in the countryside. You could be in the city. You could get Tokyo, obviously. You know, the big city part. <laughs> like, that's super cool. Osaka, like, a little bit more chill vibe, a little bit more beach-like. Yeah, there's a lot of really great places. So, uh, and so that was, you went twice, and then did they, you, when you did the live show, that was part of the second uh, tour, or is it, like, a separate thing? Uh no, so the first tour, like I said, was strictly wrestling. The second right. time I was there, we did the television show, and right. then uh, Tofu brought me back over to do the live show. The live show, I see. Okay, how how was it working with? Uh, if you could talk about how was it working with the girls? It was amazing. Um, you know, you touched on it earlier. Like these girls are idols, and they they train to do that, to perform, to sing. But you know, the wrestling that's that's not that's kind of like a secondary thing. These girls. Every last one of them, and I don't even mean the girls just in my match, but every single one of them blew me away. They all like put their everything into to making sure that they were safe, making sure that they learned their moves, learned their characters, and I was I was just floored. It was an absolute blast to just sit back and watch the rest of the show. Um, I was thoroughly impressed with everyone. And you got to see a little bit of the the, the idol uh, dancing and stuff. At yeah, the end, or... yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> that was really cool. I was, I was, I was familiar with AKB. You know, before I, I wasn't like a diehard like fan or anything, but like I was familiar. I knew of them. Um, I mm-hmm. thought they were pretty cool. But like to see them live, it was kind of like okay, like someone give me a t shirt. <laughs> and you got it? Did you end up getting a t shirt? I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so uh, yes uh why well, I, I got went through a lot of my questions that i wanted to get through uh i guess uh i mean we got a little bit more time do you, is there anything uh any hobbies or anything you specifically can mention um i mean whatever <laughs> uh i i don't know like everybody i feel like i'm so boring and then i open my <laughs> mouth and somebody's like what you do that that's incredible and i'm like oh it is i guess <laughs> um like i don't know i'm a huge nerd i'm a huge gamer um i'm like forever trying to play a game because my schedule is so cra- crazy yeah I really it's, it's i tough, really huh? get to actually do it but i'm forever trying to play a game um which was really cool for me and my nerd perspective uh during my first time in japan i got to go to the tokyo game show oh awesome yeah cool. this was what, was what, what, super what cool. year 
Uh, what? 2016. 2016. So a couple. Okay, cool. Yeah, I haven't been to. To- there was a time when I was doing like video game websites, so I was going to like Tokyo Game Show every year. And, oh, that's but, awesome! But, but I haven't been there for you know since probably 2011 or 12 or something like that. But. Wicked, yeah. Cool. So, so you got to so, walk around and see all the cool stuff. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so it was pretty funny because this was the first time I was in Japan. So the first time I met everyone at Marvelous, and we really uh-huh. didn't like know each other that well, you know. So you know when you get to know somebody, like you learn their humor and like. Learn right. who that person is, and they they were like, "Oh, you know, so is there anything that you really want to do while you're here? Is there anything you want to see?" And I'm like, "I don't even know what to say. Like, I just want to experience everything." Yeah. And I found out that um, Tokyo Game Show was gonna go up maybe like a week or two before I left to come back home. So I said, "Yeah, I'd really love, if possible." to get to the Tokyo Game Show. Uh-huh. They thought I meant going on a Tokyo Game Show. <laughs> <laughs> so they were like, which one? And I'm like... <laughs> they asked you which one. Yeah, I didn't really know what they were talking about. And I'm like, any of them. <laughs> so, That's so, so funny. So God bless them. They were like trying to get me on a, on a game show, which I totally... <laughs> Like, I also want to do an experience because, like, I feel like that would be awesome. But um, but we yeah, got straightened j- out. And, you know, I told it was the video games. And it was like, oh, that uh, thing. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because Japan has some pretty crazy game shows, man. <laughs> For but, sure. <laughs> but, that, yeah, that's awesome. They, that's just great. Maybe they can get you on a, one of them eventually. Yeah, That'd be pretty cool. That I, I'm all for it. I would I would absolutely love it. I actually there was one, it's not really a game show, but like one of my favorite shows over there was like I guess there's these uh this idol band with these boys uh-huh. and like they each go through a different scenario and uh-huh. see who can do it like the coolest. Uh-huh. And, and like I don't know what it's called or like who the band is or anything, but I was glued to my television every time it came on. <laughs> Uh, I, I have no clue. Maybe some one of the listeners will know because we, we, it's with the boy band specifically, though, right? Yeah, it's with the boy band specifically. And they're all like stupid cute. Oh my god, they're all like really cute. <laughs> and like, like I, I don't even know which one's my favorite because like they're all really, really freaking cute. But like the girls in the dojo were laughing at me because they were like, "You don't even know what they're saying." I'm like, I don't care what they're saying. This show is awesome. Oh uh, then. Yeah, Japan has some of the great, like greatest. It's just because there's no limit. They just they want to get as like it does. It's just as ridiculous as possible. I love it. I love it. You, you've, I absolutely you've seen love like it. Human Tetris, right, from a long time ago. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then and then recently, I think the one is like the slippery stairs one where they're yes! trying to climb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid, but I mean, you just can't not watch because you're like, oh, 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 oh. It's that's great. Oh, cross your fingers. Maybe I'll be on the slippery staircase next time. <laughs> That'd be great. Like, I see you <laughs> all dressed up and in character. Yes. <laughs> oh man, that, I would be, look forward to that. Um, <laughs> you said uh, you said uh, uh, Tokyo Game Show, huh? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That that, go- that was a lot of fun. I got to do that. Um, took some cool pictures and. You know, honestly, I was like so overwhelmed. I forgot to take as many pictures. As I <laughs> well, could. no, that's good. That's good though, because I. That, that, that that's one thing that drives me crazy is like because uh, I go to a lot of concerts in Japan. Like in Japan, they don't you're not allowed to film anyways, you know. All right. But like, right. but like, I every concert I go to here, it's just everybody's got their camera up, and I'm just like, just watch the show, enjoy the show, you know. Just yeah, be into yeah. It. I, I I definitely got caught up in the moment, but I said next time I go, I'm not gonna pack as many clothes. I'm just gonna pack more costumes so I can actually cosplay. <laughs> cool, cool. So uh, you're into, like, anime cosplay. I told you I was a nerd. <laughs> I <laughs> well, warned yeah, you. <laughs> our nerds are... There's definitely different types of nerds. You seem to be... This is true. video games, and now anime, too. So you're into, you're really into anime, or...? Yeah, yeah, I, um, I am. Um, you know, I, there's, there's not many... I guess you could say, like, I'm getting more into it. Sure, sure. You know, um, so I don't, you I don't any... know too many... Like, I know... I don't know how to word this. <laughs> like, I, I know a bunch of animes, but like I haven't seen a bunch of them. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm, I guess I'm still playing catch up. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, when you have time, everybody gets into everything at different times. Yeah. But, but, but specifically, you had certain cosplays that you already had in mind, or you just wanted to do like generic, like like maids or 
Yeah, like just whatever. I just I I felt so. We went to uh, we did a a thing at an anime convention on the last tour of Japan. Uh-huh. Um, it was really cool. So all the players, all the marvelous players, had been redesigned and revamped as uh, as an anime. I think it was called like a thousand flowers or a hundred flowers. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know how much more I can talk about that because they are trying to do something with that. Uh-huh. Uh, so, but that was a lot of fun. We got to walk around, but I kind of felt out of my element because I didn't have like any cosplay going on. Right. So I was kind of like, no, where's my stuff? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, th- do you have plans to be in Japan again sometime soon or? I do. Um, I don't know what I'm allowed to say, but let's just say sooner rather than later, I will be back. For wrestling. Yeah, for wrestling, for touring oh, with Marvelous. That's gr- oh, okay, great. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to say it now. I'm, I'm going to come see one of your shows in Japan. Yes! I, 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 if you, I'll try Maybe I can make it out. You're just in the D.C. area or? That's where I'm based out of. But like I said, I tour up and down the East Coast. And if we can figure out who in Texas, <laughs> we can bother the hell out of them and maybe get me out that way. Cool. If you, I mean, if you come to Texas, I'll definitely come see you. <laughs> but if you're for, in Japan, for certain, I'm, uh, you can't say anything yet. But uh, well, you, if you follow your Twitter, I'm sure you're going to announce it sometime at some point, right? As soon when as I get the final. green light, as soon as we get everything worked out, as soon as I get the green light, absolutely. That's awesome. I'll, co- I'll come see you in Japan. That would be that'd be awesome i'll see you see you wrestle and then uh we could talk video games and yes stuff. yeah we can like, we shoot some... we can shoot a live video <laughs> that's awesome that's really yeah Look, dude, i wish have I, my word i wish i had a reason to go to japan like just like you know for <laughs> like work and stuff <laughs> yeah because for me it's always like i go i spend a bunch of money and then i come back and i'm like oh i have no money now <laughs> but but you're over there doing work that's awesome I was like, that's kind of how I feel, but like I, I have a little bit of money left over because I'm like, oh, I've been working. <laughs> um, yeah, so maybe it's it's 50 minutes. Maybe uh, any other stories, Japan or wrestling stories? It's been most everything you talk about is pretty interesting. So. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I don't know. Nothing comes to mind. I should have taken notes. I don't know. <laughs> no problem. Um, you're right now. So right, maybe we can do some uh, promotion plugs. Uh, you're right now. You're uh, with Capital Wrestling. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Um, right now with Capital Wrestling, we have our one year anniversary coming up at the end of the month. On was it the twenty fourth? Just before 24th. Pokemon Community Day. Po- Pokemon Community Day. Yeah, just before Pokemon Community Day on the twenty fifth. <laughs> play Pokemon Go. Oh, like really? Me. I told you I'm a nerd. <laughs> but but the twenty twenty fourth, you have a show in Hoboken. On Ho- in Hoboken, New Jersey, on the twenty fourth, Capital Wrestling. Um, hit you're, up my Twitter, Native you're... Nye, and you'll find all the links. Oh, and... Native Nye, is that what it? Is? Oh, okay, with the eight, right? Yeah, no, I was trying to. Oh, <laughs> n- eight. Oh, okay, right. I was trying to figure out how to how I was supposed to pronounce that. N- N8. I really, I really should revamp that. Native Nye. I thought it was like Nevada, New York or something like that. But uh, Native Nye. Yeah, that's that's fine. It's cool. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> Native Nye. Yeah, that makes sense now that I see it. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're you're in a tag match, right? A tag um, team gauntlet um, for, the, uh, for a shot at the uh, Capital Wrestling tag team title. Yeah. Um, I gotta be honest. I don't know too much else that's on the show, but you know, it's Capital Wrestling has some of the best damn talent in the area, so you're in for a treat. Whoever, I gotta focus on my job. I gotta focus on what I gotta do. So I've only been paying attention to the tag team gauntlet, um, but the show is gonna be hella cool. Like I said, it's our one year show, so you know it's gonna be chock full of surprises. Um, there's some bomb diggity food, and I have some merch out. So if you're in the area, come say hi. Cool. So you have your merchandise that's on your website too? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I had a little bit of trouble getting my shop set up because uh, I think I might have put something in wrong. But um, I always have merch at my live shows and then hopefully I'll get this online shop up and running. So you have to do that all yourself, huh? Yes. It yeah, is it's, a it's headache. T- <laughs> it's tough. Because I had an artist friend who, like, you know, he's an artist. So you think that all he has to do is draw, 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 make some cool art, you know? But he started like doing more and more stuff. He was trying to get hired by like companies or go to like to these shows and sell his art. And like he was just telling me about all this other stuff you never think of that you have to deal with. 
Oh yeah. But just you, you have to deal with so much other things that besides just wrestling or just besides just being an artist and drawing. So it, it's pretty incredible to see people, you know, doing it on their own and like pursuing it. Yeah, any anybody out there doing the hustle, I applaud you. I mean, I know we're doing the same thing, but God bless you too cuz I I know it is not easy. <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's definitely not. Well, okay. Well, uh thanks for being on. I don't want to keep you too much longer. Uh I guess good luck with uh your show coming up next week. Thank you, thank you. And I, I promise you, I really will. I really will come see you in Japan. Okay. Don't make so, me come track you down. So I'll I'll, I'll be I'll watch uh, my make sure to follow your Twitter and uh <laughs> see what, make sure you t- you tweet me the uh, tweet the uh schedule so I know where you'll be so I can line it up. Absolutely. David, it's been a huge pleasure. Thank you so much. We must do this again. Thank you so much, Nyla. (laughs) Bye-bye. I enjoyed it. Stay safe. Bye.